let's uh, talk about schools. In a little m while, uh, Calvin, I want to address a problem that uh, concerns both of us, uh, yeah. and that is the fate of the Batley Grammar School teacher who re remains in hiding, terrified for his life. Uh, let's uh, talk first, though, about the National Education Union, which has issued a report uh, declaring that there's a serious need to, to decolonize education, and that is urgent. Uh, and uh, they also want to make sure that, te that kids are taught the importance of white privilege. Now, this white privilege stuff, this has kind of been discredited, isn't it? Hasn't it already? We're talking about critical race theory, which has been discredited. That is the system by which uh, people like me are told that although Kevin, you might not think you're uh, racist. Actually, you are. Uh, it's yeah. been discredited. Kids should not receive this kind of information. And yet uh, the National Education Union says it wants to press on with this and it wants to decolonize uh, the curricula of our schools. This seems like kind of old fashioned stuff that I thought teachers had grown out of in the recent months, but uh, clearly not. I wish they had, Kevin. And you, you're right to say that white privilege has been um, debunked, but it's also illegal. It's illegal to teach things like white privilege as fact in schools. So for the teachers unions to be pushing schools and pushing teachers to do this is actually inciting them to break the law, which is quite astonishing, even for the teachers unions. And I think it's just them yet again going against the government. Any decision the government makes, teachers unions go the opposite direction. They're just so political. It's never about teachers welfare never about education or schools or even children with them. It's always about pushing the opposite of the government. You know, they wanted schools to be closed. When schools were closed, they wanted them to be open. When they were open, they wanted them to be closed again. They wanted kids to wear masks all day in schools. They want kids to have the vaccination before teachers are able to go back to school and teach children properly again. They're just pushing more and more extreme ideas uh, that are just anti-conservative for the sake of being a political party and that's what they've become at this point they're a political entity in and of themselves the, Na the national education union has got 450,000 members uh, it has uh, instructed them uh, that the education offered in schools lacks honesty and transparency because i'm quoting now the silence around british imperialism and racist racism in the British education system as well as a lack of histories from around the world uh, that's uh, what they are saying we need to do urgently uh, I mean this is just some, this is a this is just a political standpoint that they yeah, they want to that. they want to teach kids as a fact how can they talk about that as a statement? How can they say we don't teach enough about the world? How can they say we don't teach enough about the empire? Have they not looked at the national curriculum? That's very, very disturbing that the National Teachers Union doesn't know what's on the national curriculum because we do teach about the British Empire quite a lot. We teach about a whole host of things around colonialism. We also teach world history, lots and lots of world history. In fact, we teach British history, European history and world history. That's pretty much how our curriculum is broken down, which is why it's so annoying when they say we need to teach more black history, because we don't teach white history or black history. We teach it based on geography and events that have helped shape our nation. But for them to suggest that we need to decolonize our curriculum, again, it proves their ignorance because the curriculum hasn't be, ever been colonized, or maybe it was at some point in the past, but right now it's not, it's far from it. In fact, we spend far too much time talking about the negatives of the British past because we're so self-flagellating. We, we don't want to offend anyone and we want to make sure that everyone knows that we are so terribly sorry for the, the sins of our ancestors, but we never talk about the positives of the British empire. We never talk about the, you know, the fact that we spread parliamentary democracy all around the world, as well as the English language and charities and hospitals and schools and railways. And we don't talk about any of that stuff in, in our curriculum anymore because we daren't. We're afraid of addressing the positives of our past. So we don't look at history holistically anymore. We only look at the negatives. So for this teachers union to say we need to further decolonize, I don't know what they want at this yeah. point. They're saying uh, it's suggesting the report suggests uh, quotes again, strategies for decolonizing education in our I like this bit nurseries. Oh, gosh. <laughs> schools yeah. and colleges. And then it goes on to say that specialists should be hired to train teachers and schools on whiteness anti-racism, creating tools for critical self-reflection and understanding the system uh, and says schools should make white privilege and colonialism visible. This is just crazy oh, nonsense, isn't it? 
it's worse than that. It's terrifying because teachers are specialists. They are subject matter experts. So a history teacher is an expert in history. An English teacher is an expert in English. And that is the knowledge that they're passing on. So to suggest that we need to get experts into schools to teach them about white privilege, it doesn't make any sense. But again, this idea that white people are somehow privileged and everyone that's not white is somehow held back in society is completely untrue in, in western society like ours in great britain where everyone has equality under the law you know in fact to be honest as an ethnic minority person i have probably have more advantages than someone like yourself kevin under our law because we have that many protections that goes the opposite way so i'm not sure what white privilege they want to teach about but it suggests to me that they want to get political activists into schools like they did around lgbt like they did about the trans issue you know stonewall mermaids mm -hmm. And they want to do the same thing about race now, get these neo-Marxist, extremely left-wing ideologies and shove them down the throats of our young people. And to suggest that we need to go into nurseries and do it there, I, I'm absolutely terrified by this prospect. And I hope that our government stands up to them and says no, because all of this stuff is illegal. You can't teach these ideas as fact in schools. I don't care what you say, uh, for an adult to stare into the eyes of, say, a 10-year-old kid, a white kid, and say, well, you, although you don't realise it, you are a racist. That is absolutely and utterly wrong. And uh, this isn't teaching kids. This, is, this report is about brainwashing kids, and uh, it must be stopped. It's absolute insanity. Uh, talking of which, let's move on, uh, Calvin, if we can, to the Batley Grammar School teacher, mm. who uh, remains in hiding four months after he allegedly enraged the local Muslim community by showing uh, his pupils a picture of a cartoon of uh, the Prophet Muhammad that uh, sparked the Charlie Hebdo shootings in Paris. He was teaching them about blasphemy, so he was actually yeah. educating them, but uh, this yeah. caused him to have to go into hiding. He's still in hiding. He's still terrified for his life with his wife and kids. Um, I'm, I'm led to believe that the school bully for them has now uh, decided Decided that he broke no rules and he meant no harm and he can, can come back to work. However, uh, he doesn't feel safe so to do. And apparently two other members of Batley Grammar School's religious education department also feel the same. Uh, what's going on? I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Kevin, because people forget this fact that it's the whole RE department now that is off. So they're having, you know, subject um, cover supervisors come in to teach uh, RE in that school because nobody wants to return to that school. They don't feel safe. And this is down to poor leadership. The fact that the head teacher did not back up the teacher um, because the teacher was doing a lesson that has been done in that school for a while. All the people in that department teach the same lesson. So it wasn't this one teacher doing anything, you know, controversial or trying to prove a point. He was teaching a lesson about blasphemy and he showed the cartoon, you know, the Charlie Hebdo cartoon, had a conversation around it. I think that's quite appropriate for, you know, for young people to be having a conversation around blasphemy in the modern day when people are still dying of it in Western countries. And we need to talk about it. We need to have that conversation as frankly as possible. But then to capitulate to the woke mob uh, in Batley and the, the head teacher did not back up the teacher. And what's worse, Kevin, what's really rattling my cage about this is that we've just had a by-election up there and neither of the candidates from the main two parties, the Conservatives or Labour, backed the teacher. And when asked about it, they shied away and tried to change the subject because it's, they're so afraid of the rec recompense of discussing it. Yeah, and they're afraid of a backlash from the Muslim community, I think. Uh, Kim Ledbetter, the eventual victor in that uh, contest, it was a very nasty contest. At one point, she was virtually backed against the wall by people saying, uh, what are you going to do about the teacher? Uh, and uh, she said, well, he made his own decision. No, he didn't. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, what is to become of him? Now, if he's allowed back uh, technically, that's a good thing, I suppose. He's terrified to come back. What is that school going to do for him? What is his new MP going to do for him? What is Boris Johnson going to do for him? Quite right. Good question. So Kim Leadbeater, you know, I looked at her literature. It was all pro-Palestine, pro-Kashmir, anti-India, anti-Modi. She was clearly appeasing and calling out to the extremist Islamist community up there to get them to back her. It didn't work out for her. In the end, they actually, you know, turned on her because she's part of the LGBT community. So she wasn't, you know, ticking all the right boxes. But this is the dangerous game that you play where you try to appease certain demographics in this way. And she tried to 
call out to the woke mob to get that her their support and i think you know in the end she did win very very marginally um it was a nine thousand majority up there and now it's 300 so she only just clung on for labor but what is she going to do to support this teacher absolutely nothing when asked about it you know you, as you said people reporters asked her you know if this teacher is fearing for his life what can he do and she said well that's his decision it's not his decision if he returns to work or not he's not safe his life is in jeopardy and the lives of his family are in jeopardy and you're quite right it's like Boris Johnson as well, because where's Prime Minister been in this? Where have the ministers been in this situation? Nobody has stood up and said, actually, you know what, we need to put better protections in place for these teachers. We need to make sure that angry, hostile, extremist religious mobs cannot dictate what's on our curriculum. We don't have blasphemy laws in this country anymore. We don't have Sharia law in this country. We never will. We have to stand by British values in British schools. And that's what this teacher was doing. So he's quite right to go back to work. And we need to make sure that he's protected to do so. But no one's done that. And I'm, I'm so disgusted by everybody involved. Well, uh, as I said to you last time we discussed this out, Calvin, let's not drop the ball on it. Uh, mm. We're going to keep them on their toes, put a, a flame to their feet and make sure that somebody helps this guy because, as I say, he's broken no laws. In fact, the schools have completely exonerated him and yet he remains in exile, if you like, in hiding, terrified for his life, his wife's life and his children's life. Uh, for a man who's broken no laws, uh, that is fundamentally wrong. Uh, Calvin, thank you so much for your time. Calvin Robinson there, former teacher and social commentator.